Yo, what's up guys? If you clicked on this video trying to optimize your FPS for the finals, well, I guarantee you, you're going to find something in this video that you didn't know about before because I am kind of a self-proclaimed nerd when it comes down to settings. Before I load into any game, anywhere, single player, multiplayer, it doesn't matter, I always go through every single goddamn tab in the settings page, no matter what. So I'm going to jump straight into the juicy bit, get right into the video settings. First, I'm going to go over the video settings, then I'm going to cover some other gameplay related settings, and then also mouse and keyboard settings because I also had a couple people asking about my keybinds. Speaking of which, thanks to Paul Lang for recommending this video idea. However, I am sorry it took so long to get it out. Okay, here's the juicy bit. If you want to maximize your FPS in this game or any game for that matter, you have to figure out where you're being bottlenecked. What part of your computer is holding you back? It could be many things from running the game on a hard drive, which you definitely should not be doing. It should be on an SSD to not having enough RAM. If you don't have that, I'm sorry, there's not really much you can do other than buying more RAM or you can be what what I'm going to be covering right now in this video is that you could be either CPU bound or GPU bound. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details of the CPU GPU bound thing, but you do need to know which part of your computer is holding you back to figure out which settings you should tweak in order to get more FPS. So the best way to do this is actually if you look over right here on the top right hand side of your screen, you'll see that my GPU utilization is at 45, 50%. That means I'm only using basically half of my GPU and getting 100 FPS. Now you might be wondering why is it only using half of my GPU? It should be using all of it and giving me 200 FPS, right? wrong this essentially means that i am cpu bound there's another way you can check it if you go into the task manager and check your cpu utilization mine is always at 100 the computer's about to explode anytime i play this game so now that you understand if you're cpu or gpu bound which by the way if you're only at like 80 90 gpu utilization don't worry about it you're really not going to hit 100 anyways so now let me split it up for you on the left side if you are gpu bound meaning that you have high gpu utilization that means you can turn down the settings and boost your FPS. FPS. If you are CPU bound, well, there's not really much you can do. Not even lowering the resolution will give you that big of an FPS boost because, because your CPU is at its theoretical limit. So you could probably increase the settings, the graphical settings, and still play at the same FPS. That's the bright side. Downside, you really can't get more FPS. So with DLSS, for example, if you're low GPU utilization, turning this all the way down to ultra performance isn't going to do anything. Look, I'm playing at a terrible graphical setting and still have basically the same FPS. And now I'm on quality, which looks so much better and still have the same FPS. If you are at a high GPU utilization, aka your GPU bound, you can definitely turn this down a couple notches, lower your graphical settings a bit and have a higher FPS. However, I definitely do not recommend playing this any lower than balanced, especially on 1080p. Anything lower than balanced, bro, it, the image quality just looks absolutely atrocious, especially when targets are moving at a long distance. It is really hard to see them move because the image starts blending. So the very lowest that I would recommend playing this at is balanced on 1080p. I should probably note in here, NVIDIA DLSS only works for RTX series cards. So if you don't have an RTX 20 series and above, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to use NVIDIA DLSS, but good news for you, AMD being the awesome company that they are, open AMD FSR for everyone to use, even though it doesn't look as good, it's still available to boost your FPS. Also, this game is one of the very few games to support Intel's native resolution upscaling, which again, does not look as good as either one of the two, but it's there as well. So the order at which I recommend using this is Nvidia DLSS, no lower than balanced. Then if you don't have that, AMD FSR 2, then if you don't have that, Intel's upscaling. With that being said, guys, if you found that little explanation informative, please do me a favor and smash that like button and go ahead and hit that subscribe to see more content like this. Now, when it comes to the rest of the settings in the game, field of view, for example, I always play at 100. Even in games that allow you to go past 100, I don't usually pass 100 because the targets become very small. For example, Call of Duty, if you put that at like 120 field of view, it's the targets are just super small and I don't like that. So I keep it at 100, motion blur off, lens distortion, this one's interesting, especially if you have a curved monitor, watch when I enable it, check out the corners like right here, watch this straight line for example, you see how it kind of bends out like that, 
That's lens distortion. It does a little adjustment towards the outside of your screen. I always keep it off. I like to keep it just flat so nothing just bends on my vision. That way when I see a target in my peripheral view, like way out on the side, left and right, I don't see a false location of where I think he is and muscle memory doesn't get messed up. So I just keep that off. NVIDIA RTX Global Illumination. Bro, we are not playing a single player game. We are not taking thumbnails for a YouTube video. We need the most FPS possible. Keep that on static. Now, when it comes to the rest of the settings here, remember, if you are CPU bound, you can possibly raise some of these settings, get a better image quality, and still play at the same frame rate. If you are GPU bound, lowering some of these could potentially give you a higher FPS. View distance. This is the one I see people having a misconception on all the time. Let me explain this once and for all and get it clear that this does not prevent targets from rendering in at a further distance let me explain all it does watch this tree right here all it does all it does is set the distance from the character that objects will start rendering in at a higher level of detail they call it lod so if you watch this tree right here as i get closer to it it's gonna pop in you see that that is a higher level of detail than it was right back about here you see that it changes lod's the further back i go if i go in here and i increase the distance for example you see how the tree popped in and now it pops out you see that that's all it does okay if you don't want objects in the environment popping in and out on your screen so if you look at here Watch out, look at this there. tree look at these things the level of detail changes as i get closer and further away from them if you don't want to see that you can increase it but keep in mind, you do need a higher VRAM on your GPU and a little bit more regular physical RAM to support that because you're rendering in more objects at a time. So if you're running an old 1060 3 gigabyte like I used to have, you probably want to keep that low. But if you're running a decent recent that <laughs> recent decent GPU, it's totally fine to keep that at medium or high even if you want. Look, it's not even going to impact my FPS. Anti-aliasing, you don't really need to worry about this one too much, especially if you have Nvidia DLSS selected. If the only place that this comes into effect is when you have TAAU selected. When you have TAAU selected, it's kind of weird the way the setting works here. When you have that selected, then you can adjust the quality of the anti-aliasing right here. But if you're like most of us and you're using DLSS, don't worry about it. Now, I'm going to be honest, guys. When it comes to shadows and post-processing, I didn't really notice that much of a difference when it comes to the game and having it be a better image especially when it comes to shadows i mean look at the difference when i toggle it on and off there's really not much of a difference so i usually keep that at low just because i am running a low-end pc but it is important to keep in mind that the shadow setting controls the resolution of the shadows in game so if you're noticing any weird grainy or minecraft looking shadows this is the setting you want to adjust other than that i usually keep that on low same thing with post-processing effects foliage and global illumination resolution i'm gonna skip textures and come back to that but these four settings i usually keep those on low because most of these settings are kind of just eye candy stuff so if you have the gpu headroom and you want your game to look a little bit better you can go ahead and enable them but for the most part i usually just keep them low side note i also noticed that the post processing controls things like motion blur bloom and lens flare dude embark allow us to turn those off individually we can't turn any of these settings off by the way we can only set them to low so if you notice in the menu you have everything low and you still notice a little bit of artifacts around the character's haze or something like that that's because we can't turn it off instead it only lets us play with it at it low which looks terrible same thing with screen space real estate that's why look here if you go right here let me what can i show you do you see this yellow shadow right here? That is screen space real estate. That takes a lot from your GPU. Being To be able to render this in, I mean, dude, I'm telling you, it's at least 5-10%, but they don't let you turn it off because you can only set it to low. It's controlled by this effects tab. Foliage, I haven't noticed any difference in game if you set it to epic or low, especially on low settings. Same thing with shadows. Global illumination resolution, bro, just let us turn them off let us turn some settings off they really need to revamp this setting menu. and now i want to talk about textures this is the thing that i said that just like view distance is misunderstood people think that if you turn this all the way down to low you're gonna have more fps textures does not impact your frames as much as people think it does 
it's so slight you're not even going to notice it. So you can play with this all the way at high if you wanted to, at the max high if you wanted to, and still not notice any impact on your frames. However, I don't recommend playing it on Epic even if you have a monstrous GPU, CPU, PC setup. Because the reason why Epic usually exists in games is for like, if you're running 4K resolution, if you have a very high resolution monitor and you really care, like really care about seeing every single pixel in this fast paced first person shooter, then sure, set it on Epic. But other than that, but other than that, you can set it to medium and high and still be fine. Essentially, all this is, is just how big are the files that are being loaded into your GPU's RAM. So if you had the GPU that I used to have, for example, the GTX 1063 gigabyte, then bro, you definitely want to set this to low because you can't be loading in any big files into there. Otherwise, you're going to be stuttering and hitching all over the place. But if you have a modern day GPU with like six gigabytes of RAM, dude, setting this to medium or high, your, your GPU can handle it. Trust me, except in scenarios like mine where you're CPU bound and you're running the game on 100% set cpu utilization all the time that's when you probably want to set this to low because you might run into some stuttering some hitches when you set this higher i know i said i'm going to explain some other gameplay related settings that you might want to enable and also my keybinds that i use but i'll probably save that for another video because this video is already way too long as is so for example my explanation on why i use these weird keybinds and such I'll probably just do it in another video. If you want to see that, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Hell, my, I might not even explain why I do that. Just keep it as my thing, my little my little curiosity thing. Like, why does he use that setting? <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that very in-depth guide on the settings in the finals. I hope you found this video useful. And if there's something that you feel that I overlooked or I'm wrong about, make sure to write it down in the comments. Other than that, I'll see you next time. Peace.